Okay, yeah, no problem. Okay, yeah, no problem. Wait, does he start or do I start? Find out. Well, I was told you wanted to talk to me. So, uh, yeah, I don't know how much longer I'm going to stick around. That last 45 minutes or whatever, that exchange, that was brutal. Uh, hopefully they don't go like this often because uh, I thought I would be interested in this uh, venue. But that that was uh, that was horrible. Well, with you and Darth's dishonesty, I doubt it. Well, hey, chill. Who was that? No, 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 no. I'm not saying it against his character. I'm saying his arguments are. That's it. I'm not trying not to be rude. rude. All right, this is not right. We're going to let Destiny ask his question to uh, Sai. Yeah, no problem. Okay, so I'll be out. My, my problem with the presuppositionalist position is that I feel like your the, the validity of your axiomatic assumptions are equal to mine. So, for instance, I say that I assume, you know, logic or reason or causality. And you say that somehow you can define some precursor to that. But it feels like when we get into an actual discussion about this, your definition or your ability to perceive God's revelation or something is just as arbitrary as any other axiomatic foundational belief. Uh, how do you respond to that? Uh, I don't know if you were here earlier when we talked about the difference between certain branches of presuppositionalism, but um, it would be a Clarkian who would say that um, our foundations are axiomatic, but I would not say that. My foundation is not an unjustifiable axiom. Mine is a necessary presupposition which is proven by the impossibility of the contrary as revealed by god okay when you say proven by the the, the revelation of god how how do you know that you are receiving a revelation from god the same way you do well can you tell me how you do the same way you do well the thing is um i, I say that god makes us certain of some things. He makes us certain of things innately. He makes us certain of things via our sense and reasoning. And I would say the only way that you can argue against that would be by saying it's impossible for God to exist. Now, the God of the Bible, if you want to say it's impossible that he exists, we can go there. But the God of the Bible makes us know things for certain. And that's my foundation. That's the foundation of my worldview. Okay. Do you acknowledge that your worldview is circular or do you reject that? It is absolutely circular, but uh, as Van Til would say, it's more of a spiral. He would say it's a virtuous circle rather than a vicious circle. And the thing is, I mean, you would have to admit that all worldviews at their foundation are circular. Like if I oh, were to I ask you- I totally admit that, but the, the issue is it feels like the presuppositionalist pretends that their circle is more perfect than another one, which is what I don't understand. Well, here's the question. This is how out of that circle. we I would ask you, is it impossible for God to exist? And if you say, no, it's not impossible, well, according to Christian worldview, God reveals things to us such that we can know them for certain. So that's how we escape the circle, because we appeal to something that's outside of that plane. We appeal to God in order to justify our reasoning. So we're, I'm not saying I reason that my reasoning is valid. I'm saying that God intervenes and makes us know that our reasoning is valid. Yeah, but in order, for, the thing is, in order for you to perceive the teachings of God or to perceive anything from God, you would have to justify the existence of your senses. The senses are the ways that we gain information of the outside world. So I don't understand how you can justify trusting your senses. For instance, if I were to pose to you the question, how do you know there's a God and not a great deceiver? You would have no way to discern between those two things, no? No, no, no. I'm not saying that I necessarily justify them. I say God justifies them. God makes us know things for certain via our sense and reasoning. He makes us know things certain uh, through innately. He makes us know things. So how God is that is really irrelevant. So in order for you to argue against that claim, you would basically have to say it's impossible for God to exist. And if you're saying that, then we can go there. If you're not saying that, I'm I'm, I'm I'm not trying. I'm sorry. I don't mean to cut you off. No, no worries. Go on. Um, so I'm not trying to say. So my position, if you were to ask me if God exists, I wouldn't say yes or no. I would say that we, we can't have knowledge of that necessarily. We just aren't equipped to have knowledge of whether or not God exists. Yeah, I understand that. But then of the two of us, have an avenue to certainty, whereas you say that you have one, I'm all ears. Why do we need an absolute certainty for anything? Well, I'm saying that I have an avenue to certainty. I'm saying without that, that you can't even justify one knowledge claim to even 0.0001%. So, you know, I understand that people, you know, are, you know, they don't like the idea of going to certainty or they're saying that it's not necessary. You know, I think that there's huge problems with, with that. Um, but I'm saying that without God, you can't even know anything to 0.001%. And if somebody wants to say that they do, I'm, I'm all ears. Yeah, so I think the reason why people have an issue with that 
is because what you're saying seems to, and I'm not trying to make an accusation, but it seems to fly in the face of how we understand most systems uh, of, of logic or, or rational. For instance, we can take an arbitrary axiom and then we can build arguments off of that. And those arguments will be valid if they adhere and conform to that particular system. You don't have to justify the axiom in order for the, for the truth claims past that axiom to be justified because whenever you're justifying a claim, you're always doing it in relation to a specific axiom. So for instance, if I say two plus two is four, I'm not saying I have absolute knowledge that the entity two plus the app plus the absolute knowledge of the entity two combined will equal the absolute knowledge of the entity four. I'm saying with respect to what we assume, you know, mathematics and, and those assumptions to be that that would equal four. I, th I think that's how most people talk, right? Like it's a form of contextualism. Right, but the thing is, you're invoking many axioms. You're invoking an axiom that your um, cognitive faculties are functioning properly, and I would say without that, that you can't even base anything off of any axioms. So, you know, that would be my question. And that's I know people don't like when I do that, but then I would say, well, how do you know that when you reason about axioms, that your cognitive uh, faculties are functioning properly? Well, sure, and I and I mean, this is um, th this would be something that um, is it Descartes who who had the 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 demon or whatever. Um, I would argue that I can only exist assuming that I exist and assuming that my senses are true. It's possible that there could be, you know, somebody creating an illusion before me, but I don't make a, I don't make an absolute knowledge claim about that. And I would argue that my ability to do so is the equivalent to yours, um, because yours is ultimately reducible to, to circular logic anyway, right? So if somebody would ask me, can you prove, you know, that everything you see isn't a dream or isn't an illusion? I would go, no, I can't have any knowledge of that. So I'm going to function as though, you know, it's not a deception, but I can't truly make a claim one way or the other. And I would argue that you're in the same boat as me. Right. But you would be arguing that from a boat where you can't know anything. And as far as Descartes goes, I'm sure you're familiar with Bertrand Russell's refutation of uh, Descartes, because he would say, I think, therefore I am. But uh, it was Bertrand Russell that pointed out that he was begging the question because his first premise was, I think. And his conclusion was, therefore, I am. But he was assuming his existence in the first premise by saying, I think. In order to not beg the question, his first premise should have been there thinking going on. And you cannot get from there to I exist. Well, uh, yeah, but I mean, when you say that God's revelation reveals himself, that's also begging the question, right? If, if you admit that your foundational logic is circular, then that's by definition begging the question as well. Right? That's where we all are. We we can't possibly justify things outside the boundaries of human knowledge, right? Like, where does logic come from? I think that's the issue with that. An, I don't want to say an atheist, but that's like a, like a, a, a non-religious person would argue there are certain things that exist outside the boundaries of human logic that we just can't justify, like causation. But that's just it. We just can't make claims one way or the other. For you to retreat to a position of circular logic and then pretend that you've justified all of that, um, I don't think that's a fair position to take. And then to, to take issue with anybody that doesn't make the same you know, type of knowledge claim that they have their own circular uh, God that justifies a position or whatever. No, I understand what you're saying. However, when I say that my foundation is ultimately circular as yours is, I'm not saying that I'm begging the question. I'm not saying that I'm committing a logical fallacy when I appeal to God, because like I say, unless you are going to say it's certain that God does, uh, does not exist, then you would have to concede an avenue to certainty to me. And that's what I'm, I'm basing it on. And you, sure, you are free to reject my claim. You might call it question begging or whatever. I say it's not question begging. It's necessarily circular. However, according to my worldview, I have that avenue to certainty. I say, well, what's yours? Yeah. And I would just say, I don't need that avenue to certainty to make any claims past that. Right. But is that a certain, you don't need it. Exactly. Is that a certain knowledge? Well, and that's where we run into the problem. Certain. Of course not. I would never claim to have certainty one way or the other. Really? Yeah, but those are all certain knowledge claims, even though you deny them. But I would say it doesn't even matter because I'm saying that unless you start with God, you can't know anything to any degree, to any percentage. Yeah, and but, that's why this is like this is kind of the this is the fallacy. This is the line of thinking that I don't like that presuppositionalists engage in. That that this idea that if I can't justify an ax this is like the primary disagreement. If I can't justify an axiom, every statement that I build off of that axiom is necessarily invalid. I, I, I think it's a ridiculous claim. Look, you know, I, I, how do you know anything? That's all. How do you know anything without God? Well, like, so you, you keep, 
So I think that you're kind of playing this kind of word game where you're saying, how do you know anything? And you're trying to pretend that's a really simple question. That's not a really simple question. Anybody that's ever experienced an altered state of not mind on a psychedelic, anybody that's ever been in a coma or when you're in a dream, you know, the, the question, how can you know anything? That's actually an incredibly difficult question to answer. And you pose it as kind of like a matter of fact, like, well, LOL, how can you know anything? When the reality is we can't. 